Alrighty guys, I'm Casey and welcome to a brand new episode of our Minecraft Modded Survival World guys and uh, I got a bit of a derp to, to, to share with you guys. I do, I do. You see, I was supposed to start recording this episode a good half an hour ago, but for the past half an hour I have been trying to fix the reason why the game has no sound. I have tried everything that I could possibly think of. I have restarted my computer, I've restarted OBS, I've restarted Minecraft. I have tried everything that I can think of. And then I was loading the game up again, and it hit me why there was no sound. Now, I turned my monitors up, I turned my speakers up, that wasn't the problem. I turned the, mo the um, volume knob on my headphones, and that still didn't do anything. But I actually just completely forgot that when I'm doing tedious off-camera work, I turn the volume down, and I listen to music. And uh, if I do that... We actually have sound. So, uh, yeah. The less said about that one, the better. Sometimes it's the simplest things you just don't think of. But guys, in this episode, let's get into what I want to do in this episode. Because in the last episode, last episode, we worked a little bit on these mines. Actually, we worked quite a lot on these mines. It was one of the most frustrating episodes that I've done. I still really like these mines. They look really, really good. We've got a staircase going down. With our branches off in each direction. I'm really happy with how this turned out, to be honest with you. It's turned out really, really good. It looks really, really nice. So I'm really, really happy with that. But what this has done is it's left us a little bit of a cave over on this side. If we head all the way over here, you can see that this side of it is just this big flat wall. There we go, look. And what I'd like to do in this area is I'd like to create some sort of cave. Some sort of cave where we house our nether portal. That's kind of what I want to do. So that's job one today, is getting ourselves a nether portal up and running. And the main reason for that is because we hop over back on over to the mines. There is some storage drawer accessories that we need. And, you know, we need, we need nether quartz. And we can't get them. And that's this bit right here. We're missing this. And this is the drawer controller. Or the drawer controller. I always say drawer. It just makes it easier to remember how to spell it. But here we go. I know it's not the compact. It's this drawer controller which requires these redstone comparators which require nether quartz. So the easiest way to get them is, of course, in the nether. So that's reason number one. Why I want to get the nether portal up and running. And why I want to get into the nether sooner rather than later. The second reason is... I've brought this cliff out over here. I know it looks kind of pants from underneath, but I'll get to that when I do the cliffs. And what I'd like to put over here is a little bit of a storage house for the coke oven and the blast furnace. Now, if we look at the coke oven, uh, it's actually called just coke brick, which is this one. We're going with the one from Immersive Engineering. All this requires is clay, brick, and some sandstone, which is easily got, and that's not a problem. But when we look at the blast furnace and we look at blast brick, this right here, what we actually get is something completely different. We need blaze powder and we need nether brick. And we don't have any of this. And we can't really get any of this from the overworld. We need to go to the nether. And the easiest way to the nether is through the nether portal. So that's why we're going to be doing that. Now, that being said, I'm thinking I'll probably put the nether portal, actually move this over a little bit. Probably put it down here in this sort of little alcove we've got going on right here. Uh, it doesn't have to be on the exact other side of that mine. This, I think, is probably going to be the better place to put it. But yeah, so, I think the first thing that I need to do today is start getting a general area cleared out for this. Some work has been done on this, guys. I've got the entrance into the cave all in place. Da -da -da -da. And I really kind of like it. Now, we've obviously got to merge this with this over here. We've also got to merge this with this over here. But since we don't know exactly what we're going to have here, the cave entrance will do just fine. So I've kept it fairly simple. We've gone with a little bit of a little bit of andesite, a little bit of dirt, and a little bit of cobblestone. Just the three mixed together. Yeah, we could have added more into this, and we probably should have to make it look more like a cave. But it looks really, really good. However, from this angle, it looks kind of pants. And this is what I want to do next. So I definitely want to have some sort of way to get in here from the mine. Because I don't want to have to run all the way around here where we don't have a staircase. Because we, we don't have a way down to this side at all. So... There's the, I don't really want to keep jumping down here and then I to mountain here all the way back up. I'd like to be able to come into here from here. We'd probably just have some sort of door or something. Uh, just some sort of sly entrance. Although for now, for now this works. 
So I think the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and start actually getting the nether portal and deciding on where I want the nether portal and then starting to design the cave around it. So if you don't know how to make a nether portal in Minecraft, I will show you. It's fairly simple and it's fairly easy. We just need some obsidian and we need a flint and the steel. Now in mod packs to get flint, what you need to do, because if you look here, we don't actually have any flint. To get flint in most mod packs, you actually need gravel. And normally in vanilla Minecraft, what you would do is you would put your gravel down. You would mine your gravel with the hope that it will drop a flint. Now, I have found that it hardly ever, if ever, drops flint in modern Minecraft. So, what we need to do is we just need to put three gravel across like that. And we'll get ourselves a flint. And we need one, well, it's called a flint and steel, but you actually use iron. Now, if you play in different mod packs, some mod packs do incorporate steel into this. But most allow you to just simply use an iron ingot. And there we go, look. Flint and steel. But now, now we need ourselves some obsidian. And I don't have tools that can mine obsidian, so I'm just going to go the vanilla route for this. I'm going to make myself a standard pickaxe. Where's my... Uh, I don't have any sticks. Why don't I have any sticks? Oh, this is a problem. This is a huge problem. We need sticks. Okay, we've got sticks. We can calm down now. We can calm down, man. It's not the end of the world. I'll tell you, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Uh, yeah, okay. So now we got this. Now what we need to do is we need to go and find some obsidian or some lava. I strongly advise you grab yourself a bucket for this. And you fill the bucket with a pitcher of water. Just, uh, this will make getting obsidian a lot easier because we need to transform lava into obsidian. Now, sometimes you can find the obsidian has already been transformed because there are water wells underground from time to time. But for the most part, I like to take a bucket with me just to be on the safe side. So what you want to do is you want to dig down to diamond level and then I'll be back with you. Once we're down at diamond level, all we need to do is find ourselves some lava. Like I said, pour the water on top of the lava and that'll make us some obsidian like so. And then go ahead and mine this. Now you can't mine this with your iron pickaxe because it requires a mining level of, of obsidian if you look there. And our pickaxe isn't good enough. This is exactly why I bought myself this Diamond pickaxe because diamond is the vanilla way of doing it now. We can use sharpening kits We can find some other materials and whatnot now when you mine obsidian You're gonna find that that happens and a good way to, to combat that is to literally put your bucket of water down and then Mine with your, mine the adjacent blocks to the water and the thing is the water will transfer this the lava into obsidian quicker than the lava can burn the obsidian that we make so if we go down here we still get that piece of obsidian and it just allows us to get obsidian a lot easier. Now, you need a minimum of 10 for a portal. But obviously, you can get a few more if you want. So, I'm going to probably get about 16. Uh, just to make sure I've got enough. But yeah, so I'm going to get on that. Now that we've got our obsidian, all we need to do is place it down in a, such a manner that we can use it as a portal. Now, there is a minimum spec for the portal. Which is 2 by 3 interior. Which is 4 by what is it six on the exterior i believe four by five on the exterior is what it is four by five that's it so i'm just kind of thinking of where i'd like to put this and i think i want to put it just kind of over here and out of the way so i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this and then we're gonna go up on either side we're just gonna make the bog standard nether portal we can make a bigger one if you want to but for now we're just gonna make this that's how i want to do it and then all you gotta do is take your flint and steel and set it on fire like so. And that is going to create us our portal. That easy, that simple. Now, I'm going to build the cave around this portal a little bit. So I'm just going to break it because I don't want the sound constantly driving me crazy while I'm doing this. But we can still put it back together like so. No, like so. Oh, I don't believe it. I literally could place the obsidian in the two uh, game. I hate you, game. I hate you. You do my nothing. <laughs> anyway, guys, I am going to get to putting this cave in place. Now, if you guys are looking for some hints and tips when building caves or when building in general, it's a good idea to break down the build into certain parts. See, what we've got going on out here is quite noisy. It's quite a lot of stuff. We've got a lot of dirt. We've got a lot of andesite. We've got like, a mixed matched blocks to get to this point. But I didn't just decide to start placing mixed match blocks. I didn't go, oh, we'll place the dirt, then I'll place the slab on top of this one. No. What I did is very similar to what I've done on the out inside here. Is I literally just built it all out of cobblestone. And that's all I've done on the inside is we've just got this built out of cobblestone. Now, we've got some mixed match stuff back here, which is the backside of the mine. And we've also got some mixed match stuff going on here, which is obviously coming from the outside area. And that's going to help us do this. Now... 
now that I've got this in place, what I like to do is I, is I want to make this look a bit more like a cave. So, I'll just start adding to it. And I'm going to keep with the stone, the cobblestone palette for now. And I'm just going to add in some stairs. Maybe we'll add in some stairs there. Maybe we'll add in some stairs here. Another stair there. Uh, maybe a couple not like that. I want them th I want them all going the same way. Maybe we start to add in some like this. Maybe even some down here. So it feels more like a cave because it wouldn't be very dug. Maybe I decide, okay, you know what, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this entire thing down one block. Just to add some more depth into it, like so. So we've got that there. And then we can go ahead and just add some stairs in there. So maybe we just put some there, put some there. Uh, maybe another one in that corner. Yeah. So we've got a little bit of a dip there. Maybe we add another dip over here. And all I do is I start just adding to it. This one I'm going to do like that. So it's just like it looks like there's a block missing. But it's only just a half slab. <laughs> we can even just go here and just add a stair in like so. Just to allow it to look a little bit more done. Maybe we decide that, okay, you know what, actually, I want to bring this down a little bit here like so and all i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna do that and then when we have some cobblestone i'm just gonna bring that down and then again we've got a little bit more looking like a cave we could even go a little bit more and go okay now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add this here and then i'm gonna grab some slabs i'm gonna add some slabs in just to bring this across to make it look like a little bit more like a cave we could even add some slabs up there maybe some slabs back here and we could pile that up there add another slab in there maybe we decide to add a, another couple of slabs here and maybe one even there and as you can see, this is just taking shape as we do it. Let me go ahead and just grab some cobblestone stairs like so. Now, this is how I like to do it. And all I do is I just go around and I just add in these bits here. And now that looks much more like a cave than what it did before. It looks all kind of stuff. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to literally just decide to add in some andesite. So I'll grab some andesite and I like to put this here. I'm going to have to go repair my pickaxe in a moment. But all I'll do is I'll just mash out some random blocks try not to make a pattern with this and then i'll just add in the andesite like so i like modern because i could just right click to add it you can also do this in vanilla now with the offhand but let's start to take some shape now, i don't have any dirt oh there's a bit up there i missed but we could also go ahead and go you know what actually i think i want to change this out and have this be an andesite stair and then just pop an andesite stair in there maybe i decide okay you know what actually i'm gonna put an andesite stair there as well Oh, you know what? I think I'll put one up there. And maybe one there. Oh, yeah. And that's all I do. I start with a blank canvas of cobblestone. Then I just start adding into the cobblestone. And I get this sort of mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. I'm going to add some dirt in as well. And then I'll be back with you. And there we go. Just by following that simple pathway, we've got something that looks like a cave. Now, you could come through. You could put in bossy cobblestone. You could put in... Various different chiseled versions of cobblestone. You could add in some andesite. You could add, well, not andesite, sorry. Diet, not diet, right? Granite, you could add some granite. You could add in some gravel. You can literally add in any combinations. And another thing that you can do, and don't be afraid to do this, is maybe add in some things that don't work in here. Maybe like a wooden beam. Because it could be that maybe this was once part of a mine many, 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 many years ago. And so there would be remnants of that mine in here. That could help you add some color to a mine if you wanted to add a color. Think behind what the reason of that mine would be there and the reason why the cave sorry, would exist and all the possibilities that it could potentially be. It could have been that maybe the elders of the village lived in here for a while so we could have some living quarters. I did a cave in my vanilla series where the guy arrived to the place on a horse and cart and he took over a nearby cave. So the cave had some chests in it, it had a little fireplace in it, you know. And that can help you decide what you're going to put in the cave. Now, we're just going for a generic cave here. And I'm kind of happy with the way that this turned out. I probably might add some more uh, cobblestone. Not some cobblestone, sorry. Some more dirt into the ceiling. I think that's something that uh, maybe would be a good idea. Maybe a little bit over here. Now, I've had to be careful on this back wall. Because if we pop through this back wall, uh, in some places, we do pop out into the mine. I don't want that. So, maybe we can sneak some bits in here. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is back here, we're just going to uh, pop ourselves a nice little hole here to be able to get through and into the mine so i'm going to grab a stair here i'm just going to put the stair like can i get through if i put the stair there no i cannot uh, that's not actually the way that i wanted to put the stair i wanted to put the stair kind of like that but i still think we're going to face the same issue getting through we are so we can just get rid of that and that allows us to get through a little bit easier there so i think just to make this a little bit more cramped we're going to do that yeah so we've got that little hole there leading into the cave 
That's fine. It still has the entrance to here and it doesn't look too bad. I've tried to cover the portal up somewhat, but uh, we haven't been too successful. I just realized that there's um, a bunch of stuff back here. So we're going to just fill this in for now. We'll just maybe add in a piece of dirt there. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. And now we can go ahead and light this. We can going into the nether in a moment. So I'm just going to, I'm going to actually get to work on the other two. The, the uh, coke brick and the blast furnace first. But we need to go into there for them. So let's start gathering resources. So looking at the recipes, this is the resource gathering that we need. We need 54 nether brick, 54 brick and 14 blaze powder roughly for the blast furnace. And then for the, for the um, coke oven, we need 54 brick, 54 clay and 14 sandstone roughly. I think we need uh, 13 and a half, but that'll do. That'll do because that's what we need to be able to craft it. So the biggest grind on here is going to be the clay for the bricks because we need... Nearly three stacks worth of clay, two of which we need for bricks, and one we need for clay. And I don't think that I have that. So, I think first upon the gathering list is to go ahead and gather some clay. With the last of the clay gathered, all we need to do now is go ahead and gather up some sand. And we've got everything that we need for the blast furnace. Sorry, the coke oven. Let me get working on the blast furnace. And with this sand comes the last of the sand. We've got everything that we need for the coke oven. Now we've got to hop on into the nether. Well, guys, it looks as if we've had a reasonably good nether spawn. This is our nether spawn. We've got a fortress right there. So finding a blaze shouldn't be too difficult, nor should be getting the nether axes. It seems like we got a, we got a tower up there. But if you're playing modern Minecraft, I can't stress this enough. Find out what your map is. If you've got a journey map like I do, it's Dre. Click this little flag icon here. Click new and click portal like this. And then click save. And what that'll do, once we close it down, is, is going to put this nice little thing right here. Just a couple of blocks away from our portal. If I stood where the portal was. Oh, there's a gas in the lava, by the way. If I stood where the portal was, they had to put that right on the portal. But uh, let's say this gas is literally chipping away at us. It's like firing at us through lava. Little, little, little monkey. Anyway, I'm going to get up to this nether fortress. Try and grab myself about a stack of nether brick while I'm at it. Shouldn't take too long to get up there. Well, now that I'm in the nether fortress, all I gotta do is try and find myself a blaze rod and get myself some blaze rods. Shouldn't be that difficult, right? Looks as if there's a chest down there. Well, I found myself a blaze spawner. That was easy enough. Now it's time to get ourselves some blaze rods. Hello, blazies. Time to die. These guys are gonna be a bit rough, but... Looks like I saw two shots and I'm just gonna gather some blaze rods. We've got our blaze rods. I just need to grab myself some more nether rack, rack while I'm in here. And I said braze instead of blaze in that last clip, but that's okay. We all make mistakes. We're almost done. And with the return home does come the crafted. So we need 28 of these in total. So we're just making ourselves 26. Did I, did I miscalculate that? I think I may have. I do have an additional clay around here. I must have miscalculated this. Hopefully... I haven't made too much of a mistake. There we go. There's a 28. Good, 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 good. Now what we need is the blast brick, which is, again, not too difficult now that we've got everything that we need. So let's just go ahead and grab this. Again, it would seem that I have made a small miscalculation. So one, two, three, four. I think we just need some brick, is it? Yes, we just need to break. Meanwhile, while that does, there is one more thing that we are going to need. It's called the Engineer's Hammer. And it isn't too difficult to make up. It's just two iron, a piece of string, and two sticks like so. This makes that Engineer's Hammer. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to interact with these tools just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves um, a little bit of coal. I would kind of like a stack of coal, if I'm honest. Uh, this may be enough. It's 63. That's fine. We can just grab one from over here. Good, 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 good. Come on. Come on. You're almost done. You're almost done, my friend. Almost done. There we go. There we go. There we go. Be able to get our last piece of blast brick like so. Now, I can never remember if these have to be whole or not. Hollow or not. Sorry, not hollow. So, we're going to try them at full blocks first. So, oh, yeah. I made this little little area for them. We can get rid of this now. Uh, we don't need this anymore. This can go. Come on. I used the wrong tool. For some reason, I thought I was using the hatchet. Jeez, I tell you, every time I try and do something to save time, I actually think, oh, that'll save time. I always end up taking more time. Okay. 
So what we're gonna do is we start with the coke oven, like so. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna put down these in a three by three block, like so. And you'll always be left with one left over. And I'm gonna take the engineer's hammer and we're gonna right click it. Good, 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 good. That one works. And I think it's the railcraft ones that have to be hollow. So we'll just pop these up here. Ooh, we'll pop that back there. Like so. Now, some in some packs, you don't need to use the engineer's hammer to do this. There we go. Brilliant. Now, I can't show you the function of both of these in this episode, but I can at least talk you through them. So, what this one does is this one allows us to put coal in here, and that coal will become coal coke. It takes a little bit of time. It will generate a um, byproduct of creosote oil. I couldn't remember what it's called for a second then. It will generate creosote oil as a byproduct, but that's perfectly fine. But we'll, we'll use that at, in time anyway for immersive engineers, so we will need this. But this does take a significant time to work. Now, when we need, now this one, if we right click it, we've got two options. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to turn iron into steel. Now, there are a couple of ways in the pack to turn iron into steel, but this is definitely one that doesn't require power. And it's sort of your more early game style of making steel. So if we got ourselves... Uh, I think we'll grab ourselves uh, 16 iron just to be on the safe side. Because we will need some steel. We can throw this iron in here. We might be able to actually. Might be able to show you both functions. And then what we can do is we can grab this coal coke once it's done. We can throw that in there and that'll turn this iron into steel. And that's how we get ourselves steel in immersive engineering. It's also how the coke oven and the brass furnace work. And I do kind of like this. Although there is one small change that I want to make. What we're going to do is we'll take these out down here. And we're going to switch them out for these. Not only does this look really industrial-like, like so, but it also works pretty good. We can even go ahead and just stick some furnaces up there so that we've got our furnaces about here. And this, this may be done. Yeah, there's our coal coke look. This does take a fair bit of time. You can also throw into here um, the blocks of coal, which is what I usually do. It just allows it to... I don't have to babysit it as much is what I'm trying to say there. But this takes a fair amount of time to do. I mean, it's not it's not massively long. But I think one piece of cold coke gets us one iron. So you'll need a whole stack. It does. It is a time-consuming process. But it's an easy and quick way. Well, not a quick way. But it's an easy way to get steel without having to worry about power generation. Without having to get into mechanism. And in some packs, this is the only way to get steel. So this show, this is, uh, this is fairly easy to do. It's fairly simple. It just takes a fair bit of time, that's all. But as you can see, it's starting to make progress. But I think, I think that is going to do it. I think I've done everything that I want to do in this episode. Let's see if I can get in a little bit closer here. There we go. That'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do nicely. Waste a little bit of time. It may be done. Come on! It's got one final push! You can do it, Steel! Yes! There we go, we got our steel. Now it does create this byproduct of slag, which I haven't really found much of a use for, to be honest with you. Uh, but maybe there's one I just don't know about yet. But that's how you get slag, it's how you get steel, it's how you get coal coke, it's how the blast furnace works, it's how the coke oven works. It's a really good tutorial. It also shows you how to get to the nether as well as we did. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. So, if you've enjoyed the video, please do consider leaving a like. It really helps the channel and I really do appreciate it, so please do leave that like. And click subscribe if you want to see more from me, guys. I'm KC. I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.